Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Joseph, good morning. This is Masma here from Anmudi. Hi there. Uh, I wrote you an email uh, maybe 30 minutes ago only. Uh, I need your assistance. If you can open my email, uh, I will ask you one quick question how to validate the data. I mean, what do you want me? How to look for it? I don't know if that's such a quick. Nazma, I don't know if that's such a quick question. I might need to get um, Babakar to give you a response. Um, okay. So, yeah, I will. Um, were you here uh, on the VTC yesterday? Yes, I attended yeah. the VTC yesterday. Okay. Uh, but I did not get it. <laughs> How to get it? Okay, so I'll, um, I'll have Babakar um, contact you. Uh, this morning. I'll have him do that first thing, okay? Okay. All right, Fine. great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Should we start? Um, uh, in about one minute. Yes, good. Um, okay, so um, good afternoon. Uh, um, Amarim, sorry to interrupt you. Can you tell us which one is the VTC number so that from Nairobi oh. they can dial in? Okay, um, the VTC the 74412. 74412, thanks. Yes, yes. Okay, um, so uh, good afternoon. Um, colleagues. Um, thank you for today's session. Um, today we are going to walk through the Mock 2 data validation on the data element of the purchase order, uh, C0123. And, um, you know, we hope that you have most of your CPOs or your data validator on this, you know, uh, data element uh, joining today. And, um, I understand from yesterday VTC that you know some of the missions do not have access to the VC um, you know facilities. So I just want to check uh, quickly that you know is anybody joined through the uh, audio bridge number like a via phone? Yeah, this is Yonami. We are connected through the audio. Okay, okay. Thank you, Yonami. So, um, so. Basically, I just sent out an email uh, having, I mean, sending that URL link, uh, joy.me, you know, slash GDP Galileo to Umoja. So if you could just maybe open that link in your browser, you will be able to see the presentation that we are kind of sharing, uh, you know, live. So you can hear, you know, our voice through the phone and then you can also look at the presentation uh, via your browser. Okay. So... We will, I'll give the floor to Emma. If we okay. get one, just think, can, okay. can everybody please um, mute for the time being? Okay. Uh, we still hear some background uh, noise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Emma Grant. I'm on the GDP... Uh, project um, as the testing team lead and also the coordinator for 
all things connected to purchase orders. And for those of you that know me, I was the Emoja uh, production support officer for two and a half years, so it's nice to see some familiar faces. Um, before I start, um, I have to start with an apology. I've got a number of different presentations and documents to look at, but we're still in the process of getting things signed off, so I can't actually share them with you as yet, so I apologize for that. Could somebody mute, please? I think, uh, I think Onso, um, if you can mute your microphone, please, and there might be somebody else. I'm not sure. Okay, so um, what we're going to discuss today is um, the purchase order preload and postload validation for Mach 2. Um, we'll look at an introduction and the summary of the key decision. The preload validation, the postload validation, and the key dates. And um, obviously, you're going to have to listen to me for the duration and um, any questions questions and answers afterwards and we may not be an hour we may be less um, just to introduce the Mach 1 pre and post load validation was carried out by the GDP team however obviously as some of you will remember from cluster 1 and 2 um, pre and post load validation for Mach 2 is carried out by the missions and you will also then carry out pre and post load validation for dress rehearsal and cutover so really this is the first time to um, get your skills together and ensure that by the time we get into cutover, we're 100% ready to go live. The process is fairly similar to what we've done previously. Um, however, the main difference that we have now, um, which some of you who are involved in cluster three and four will be aware that for the first time with purchase orders with fixed assets are going to be converted. In the previous clusters, they were just closed down and during ramp up, every office had to recreate shopping carts and purchase orders for fixed assets. So this is a big breakthrough and, and it's going to involve a lot less work for you, um, which is going to make your lives much, much easier. Um, just back on to the key decision document that we had discussed in a previous VTC. This is the... Uh, document for the strategy for how to deal with all open purchase orders that need to be converted as we go towards go live. Um, just to emphasize again, this is um, covering just open purchase orders that have remaining balances um, at the time of deployment of GDP. So what we're going to do in Mock 2 is take the open purchase orders as of the 10th of April and we will convert those purchase orders with um, the necessary characteristics for I'm um, sorry there's something come up there um, for downstream processes for inventory um, warehouse management and IPSAS compliance sorry let me just go back sorry about that um, the scope um, does not cover um, shopping carts, incomplete solicitations or contract documents. So I just wanted to reiterate again that this is purchase orders and these purchase orders are for goods. Um, obviously purchase orders that are just for services are not affected um, because they're not in Galileo. Um, and any purchase order that has either not been fully received or um, only partially received will need to be converted and we need to ensure that we can convert these documents so that they have the correct fields to ensure that you can then receive the inventory into a moja for inventory and warehouse management and also that the purchase orders have the fixed asset master record on them at the beginning um, this is the two really big changes because obviously at the moment <clears throat> you create fixed asset master records in Galileo. You do all your receiving and warehouse and inventory management in Galileo. But in Emoja, everything starts with the shopping cart. So the shopping cart has to be correctly set up um, and 
um, then approved in order to do downstream activities. So for your existing purchase orders that are currently set up as consumption, that is what we are doing is um, taking the extract and then we'll be enriching that extract and um, then you'll be able to, in the postload, confirm that you've got the correct purchase orders and that they're set up correctly for inventory and fixed assets. So obviously, as we said previously, we will be looking at three budget periods. Um, P17 for peacekeeping, which will be the prior budget period, because obviously you'll have finished on the 30th of June. So we will be converting purchase orders that you can receive and pay only. P18 will be your current budget period peacekeeping and um, B17 for SPM's current budget period. Um, I'm going to repeat myself a few times, but I think that these are very important points. Um, the open purchase orders containing asset lines um, will be um, put through the conversion program, which has been updated specifically for GDP um, by Nick Zagrafos. And it now incorporates logic to manage the automatic load of asset relevant line items. So the asset master shell is going to be created and linked to the purchase order. Um, open purchase orders containing inventory lines. Um, we will close the existing open purchase orders and load the inventory characteristics into the new purchase orders. So that then they'll be able to be received into the plant storage location. And for those that have been involved in training and things so far, you'll be able to um, do the goods receipt, put it into the bin, um, change bins, change sections, change plants, etc. Um, the regular monitoring um, of the open purchase orders has started. Um, yesterday I sent out emails to all the chief procurement officers um, with any purchase orders that um, are raising a red flag at the moment and um, to be honest it's not looking too bad at the moment. Um, I think that obviously there are a number of purchase orders without product IDs that need to be corrected and there are a number of purchase orders where a fixed asset product ID has been used and some of the times that has been because there's no other product ID available for you um, and obviously what should happen is that your requisitioner should have seen that there was nothing there for them and then requested a new one. But because of the logic in your system at the moment, when you select a 21 series product ID, you don't get the triggers and the warnings to say you're ordering a fixed asset. Obviously that'll change when we go live in Emoja. But um, I just wanted to sort of um, have a good point on that because it's not looking um, as bad as it could be and as long as people are now monitoring and as I said in the supply chain management conference and on previous VTCs, shopping carts that are incorrectly created need to be rejected. I know it's difficult for some offices but you must reject them and ensure that they're done correctly so that your procurement units can just flow through and do the, the procurement job that they need to do. Um, and the days of uh, amending purchase orders and changing things um, obviously from the days of Mercury and obviously for the fact at the moment that there's a lot you can do in Galileo to fix problems um, moving forward that's not possible either the shopping cart is correct or it's rejected um, but um, as I said before it's it's kind of looking not so bad at the moment so keep up the good work um, some exclusions to purchase order conversion. Um, these exclusions include trust funds, extra budgetary funded items, and obviously, as we said before, services. Um, purchase orders that are 100% services are not going to be touched. They'll just stay in the system and you continue to do with them what you've done to date. However, um, purchase orders that have got a mix of goods and services um, will be converted. Um, to ensure that the goods are converted correctly so that you can receive both. So for preload validation, the objective is to review and confirm that the data in the preload file, and I'll show you a, a sample of a preload file in a second, um, has been extracted from production correctly 
and um, you validate um, that the information in that preload file is, is correct to what you have in production today. Sometimes, you know, a, a program like this can run errors where the wrong purchasing group will be transferred across or the wrong plant or storage location. So it's very important that these um, information is, is provided and checked. Obviously, there is going to be a, a separate detailed instruction sheet that will come out to you. Um, and if I can just, can I have the mouse, sorry, can I just um, oh, sorry. go back and provide a look at the preload file. Okay, so this is an example of the preload file that we used for Mock 1. No, sorry, this is the postload. Um, so it, it pulls through the information. Um, you have a header tab. And all this information will come through to you on the instruction sheet, so don't worry too much about taking details of, of the notes. But you have a header tab obviously similar to what is available on the header of the purchase order. And then you have the item tab, which breaks down the details, obviously, of the product IDs, the descriptions, the units of measure, the quantities, the net price, etc. Um, so if we can go to presentation. Sorry, flipping around a bit. Um, so postload validation, um, you will receive a, a file, as you have done for the preload validation which will be available in Cosmos, and we will send you the links of where to find that. And um, what you will be doing in postload is um, validating that the file has been enriched correctly um, for inventory and or fixed assets. And you will be provided access to the Mock 2 client so that you can log in and check that these purchase orders have been set up correctly. Um, I'm not going to say that second point again because I've said it quite a few times now. Um, but I think that for those of you that have been involved before, um, having the fixed asset master shell created automatically and, and loaded onto the purchase order is a really big step forward for you and um, it's going to make life much easier. And I think just linked to that point, that's why I'm obviously raising these issues at the moment on open purchase orders where the fixed assets are really obviously not fixed assets. Um, the two main examples seem to be the purchase of drones, where the average cost of a drone that you're buying is about $600, and you are creating the purchase orders at the moment as a fixed asset, um, because that's the only product ID that's in the system. Um, and also another one is motorcycles, um, again, there's only one product ID in the system, which is creating the purchase order directly as a fixed asset. And obviously, if we just took those purchase orders and converted them and enriched them as fixed assets, your financial reporting would be incorrect because you would be reporting um, these things as fixed assets when they're not. Um, just on those two items, um, drones, what we have advised the missions to do um, is to receive and pay for these purchase orders as soon as possible. And then the data conversion team will ensure that the inventory that is loaded into your plant has the correct product ID on it at that point in time. Um, we don't feel that um, trying to wait for a product ID to be created and then for you to recreate your purchase orders for those is um, essential at the moment. And for motorcycles, um, one mission, um, unmill, I know what you're doing, that's fine. And for the other mission, um, I did send an email out to Minusma, so if you can um, have a look into that for me. Um, so obviously, as I said, we've got a header tab on the file and an item tab. And um, it'll... Um, you can sort everything by purchasing group. Um, 
So the file will come as a big file and you just filter for your own purchasing group or groups. Um, and then you'll be able to um, follow the steps in the instructions and, and do your preload and then postload validation. Um, this information will come out to you, so I, I won't go through it in detail. But just as a reminder, when we convert purchase orders, um, for those that remember, um, at the moment there are 22 series. And when we convert them and load them, they will become 24 series. And obviously during cutover, um, when we convert the purchase orders, we will complete the 22 series purchase orders so that you don't have double budget. But for the, um, for the mock two purposes, we're not going to complete the purchase orders. So from a budgetary perspective, it'll look as if you spent double money, but don't worry about it for mock. And then obviously for low value purchase orders, they'll be um, converted as the 23 series. Um, the important things to note are obviously the document date on your converted documents. P17 will be the 30th of June and then P18 and B17 will be aligned with when we actually do cut over. Um, on the item tab, or even I can't read this, um, the, the, the main things to look at is obviously the account assignment where at the moment you have everything that is for consumption and then what we will be doing is enriching it so you either have DM for inventory or AS for asset. And um, for assets we will create um, as part of the enrichment a field for the fixed asset master shell. Um, and as I said previously you'll be provided with um, read only access into the mock 2 client so that you can do post load validation but for preload you'll be in production so um i hope you can all remember your login sorry that was slight humor um have I, no, this, oh, sorry, yeah. So this is an example of the postload validation file. It's just opening up. So this looks um, horrendous, um, but I will provide you detailed instructions um, for it. Again, it's similar to the preload file. We have a header tab and an item tab, but here you'll see that we have the existing PO number, and then we will have the new um, enriched converted purchase order number. And um, then obviously on the item tab, again, it'll provide you details of um, the product ID that you have at the moment, the product ID that we map and convert, the descriptions um, and everything else. So a lot of the um, post load that's done by the Emerger technical team will be to check that everything that we've mapped across is correct. But then what we need you to do is obviously check um, certain other things such as Obviously, actually, the product ID, the unit of measure, the quantity that you've got left, um, and, and do the budget checks as well. So, um, the key dates um, at the moment, um, and I put a little caveat on that, um, you know, we're obviously subject to um, potential change depending on the um, successful conclusion of Mach 2. Uh, sorry, of, of the rest of the Mach 2 data load. So the um, extract preload file will be taken and completed by the Emoja team on the 17th of April. We'll then load that file into Cosmos for you to access. And um, sorry to say it, but it's two days, the 17th and 18th of April, for you to do your preload validation, complete the sign-off form, and load the preload validation sign-off sheet to Cosmos. Once you have done that, we will then um, enrich the file for postload, um, including obviously putting all the information in concerning inventory and fixed assets. And um, we will then load that postload file to Cosmos on the 20th of April. 
and again it's a two-day window to do post load validation complete your sign off and um, load it back into Cosmos um, I apologize on behalf of the project these are very tight timelines um, there is not much that I can do about it unfortunately um, we just all have to try and work together so um, just a couple of um, reminders again I, I, I talk about fixed assets all the time but I think it's really important to note and it'll come through as um, a reminder sheet for you if you have an existing purchase order with 10 vehicles on one line when we convert the purchase order because we have to create the individual asset master shells that one line purchase order will come through converted as a 10 line purchase order with one asset on each line um, there is nothing else that we can do for this so um, it's just to note and obviously we will be um, providing you a lot more information and the instructions um, and a copy because I know Minuska had asked for a copy of the signed KDD document we don't have it yet I apologize um, we have the presentation on the KDD to send to you we have the presentation obviously on the pre and post load we have the instructions and then we have the validation sheet, which for some of you, it'll be similar to what you used before. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. Um, so um, I just wanted to, this is a sort of what the pre and post load instructions are going to look like. Um, there'll be details of where to find your folder, what to do, um, and who to contact and obviously that's me and then for post load it's a lot more detail because we have a lot of enrichment to do for you to confirm that we can um, convert the purchase orders over correctly and again the details of the cosmos links and the fact that um, if you have any issues or questions you can come to me um, oops, sorry I'm going to get there in the end so for those of you who remember um, this is vaguely what the uh, validation form will look like. You will go through steps, um, do certain checks, and then you will sign off and upload that signed document into Cosmos. Um, so um, I've talked for 25 and a half minutes. Um, so now I'm going to open the floor to questions and I'll um, have Joe and Amarin control it as normal and um, so thank you very much for listening and I'm open for questions and hopefully I can ask Udai are you going Hello to start Minuska? with and off come on Okay, thank you, Emma. I, I, have, uh, I have seen your email which uh, Chief Procurement forwarded to me regarding one PO issued by Undoff. Uh, the product ID used is for the fixed asset. Uh, that PO was issued on behalf of OSCS. However, I found out that this is a system contract PO for Cisco. So if we are talking about having a correct item, product IDs in the shopping cart from the beginning itself, I think we need to also look at fixing them from the contract level itself so that whenever we have any product ID uh, coming from system contracts, it has to be correctly pulled down. Um, thank you for that, Udai. Just on that point before you raise the next question, um, a couple of other missions had raised that as well, and I think this is where we just need a little refresher on the product category contracts. If you have a product category contract, obviously the requisitioner will select the product category in the um, catalogue and then it is up to them to put in the product ID and the description and the price so that's what they're not doing they're just selecting the product category from the contract catalogue and then mm -hmm. they're just going through um, I, I, I will check on both Cisco and Fleischhiker because that was the other contract and I know that that one is problematic so I will check those but I think it's just a reminder to your requisitioning offices that this is how the contracts are set up at the moment either you have a product ID and you select it a little like Amazon and then everything comes through and you just submit it 
But if you're doing a product category which covers vehicle spare parts, Cisco, Lenovo, Fleischhiker, um, some of the other contracts, then um, unfortunately at the moment in order to cover for the way that we need to order, the requisitioner will need to select the product category and then put in the product ID, the price and the um, description. Um, yeah. So I think it's just a, a little reminder and, and to be really fair, there aren't that many out there um, and it, it could have been something that has slipped through but if we can just ensure moving forward that if we are receiving these shopping carts where there are product IDs missing that they just, you know, do it properly um, so that it, it, it's, it's less work for procurement and less hassle downstream because you're going to have a lot of change on the 1st of September and uh, you know as long as your purchase orders are correct that'll be half your battle done. Um, thank you Emma. Um, actually uh, this is the first VTC uh, which I'm attending for this uh, GDP. Um, our colleague uh, Habib is there in UNLB who is working with the team. Uh, I have another question now followed through uh, regarding this POs for services. Okay. Uh, we have turnkey projects. At the moment, the current practice is we obligate money for a turnkey project which contains assets and inventories as well as a service internal obligation. We make the contract and we pay. But, but now it looks like uh, we may have to change the way of uh, business being done for this particular uh, service contracts because if the assets and inventories are going, going to be pulled down from the requisition shopping cart, then the shopping cart for the turnkey project should not be with only service, it has to contain the lines. So I don't know what is the thoughts behind that, Emma. No, um, thank you for that point. I'm um, discussing that with Christine Vickery now because um, it's, it's a really good point you raise because obviously at the moment the turnkey <coughs> is a service and, and we get nothing out of it apart from the services. But for some of them we do end up with assets either at the end or the, um, the vendor donates. Um, and I can think of water containers and other things at the moment. But I will discuss that with Christine Vickery and, and come back with a clear response for you. Thank you. Emma, uh, Sasha, sorry. Um, Hi, I'm, Sasha. Listen, I'm listening what you're talking and also in relation to those uh, uh, couple of POs that you have identified throughout the mission where you have a fixed asset product ID but uh, the threshold doesn't fall under the category to be uh, capitalized. But isn't the, the portfolio of the asset account manager actually to eventually delete those kind of uh, uh, assets which should not be assets from the records once we go into the, uh, once we, let's say, the commission pro uh, Galileo? And I, I believe the same should apply for those service contracts where you have obviously equipment as a part of turnkey project where those assets should be then entered uh, into the asset record. Uh, that's that's my understanding. Sorry, I, I, you might not have the answer, but I, I believe that that should be asset account manager uh, uh, responsibility. Um, I, I will confirm that, but the I think the big difference is is that the asset account manager at the moment in Galileo can do a lot of things and and change a lot of things and and everything else. But once you're fully in a mojo. Um, the creation of the um, asset master shell is at the shopping cart stage. So it, it's right at the beginning and, and then it flows through to all the downstream processes. And you can't, at the point of goods receipt um, or purchase order, um, change what has been created already. Um, I know that we have um, a number of issues, as I said, the two um, points that we've raised so far, where we don't have product IDs in the system that we can use that are correct. And obviously, part of the data conversion team's role is to um, put forward and, and get um, as many hundreds and thousands of new product IDs um, that are required to ensure that existing equipment that you have in inventory can be correctly mapped. So some of it is um, is not is not the issue of the office, it's it's what you have at the moment and the only way that you can deal with things. And obviously, um, to date, anything that's created as a fixed asset can then be turned off in Galileo, but we can't do that in Emoja. So we need to ensure that you have the correct product IDs moving forward so that when the shopping carts are created, 
that they have the correct product IDs that they can then obviously confirm whether or not you know it is actually a fixed asset they're doing. Sorry, but Emma. The... Sorry Emma. I was talking about asset account manager in Umoja, the, the new roles that there are two roles I think that will be implemented uh, with the asset uh, accounting. So I understand the, the portion of Galileo but uh, my understanding was that we would have financial account asset account managers and another uh, account asset account manager in Umoja uh, post uh, Galileo. So okay, I mean, I know it's not uh, easy to 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 discuss about something we we do not know much about, but uh, that might be the solution for those uh, uh, items that we do not have product ID. Neither we can wait a product ID to be created, so we can transfer them and eventually delete them after uh, in Umoja. That was the idea. Yeah, I mean, what we're hoping to do for the ones that have been um, already received into inventory in Galileo with the incorrect product ID is that they will be mapped correctly for you so that moving forward, as you said, they're not um, mapped as fixed assets. Um, so hopefully that is what will be done for the majority. And obviously the two big things at the moment or small things are the drones and the motorcycles. And I know not a lot of you buy them, but for those that do, um, it is an issue because there is no other product ID in the system you can use. If, if others do not mind, I just have two, three quick questions uh, more of technical nature related to the extract. Uh, first one is, is data coming from the uh, ECC or directly from the uh, tables from the ECC or it's a BI extract? It's coming from SRM. From SRM directly, okay, from the tables. Uh, the second one is, you mentioned LVA, I, I had that uh, wrote down on my uh, list of questions. Um, we might have, some of us, some mission might have asset on LVA, some may have a lot of equipment on LVAs. Uh, I, I see that mostly procurement people are invited to this conference, although we have obviously colleagues from the cost centers. Whose responsibility would be for validation? Do you have any instruction or it's up to mission to decide? I think it's up to you to decide, but overall, you know, the, the, the purchase order type is, is, is linked in with procurement. Obviously, I understand your point that you don't actually do them. Um, at the moment, um, from the extracts that we've been running, we don't see many that are an issue. Um, and obviously, with the change in the threshold of the LVA recently, it does mean that um, missions are able to purchase fixed assets on, on LVAs. So I know that it is um, becoming more of, a, more of a concern and a checking point. So I'll just um, note it down to see whether... Um, yeah, uh, another, one, another one you mentioned, vehicles. Uh, uh, it's uh, very unlikely that missions were buying vehicles because it was centralized through PD. I don't see PD present here, but would there be uh, their responsibility to validate uh, all those POs that they have issued on behalf of the missions? Um, no, um, is a quick answer to that. I, I, can, I can raise it with Greg, but really the purchase orders are, um, they belong to the missions. Um, and I don't see anything on the extract at the moment with issues on it. There are a lot of um, purchase orders for fire trucks and, and other things, but they've all got product IDs on. They all look fine. The, the values are correct, so they'll be converted without an issue. Yeah, the, the issue is, Emma, is extract based on fund or the purchasing groups? That's a big, big uh, issue for the data validation because for us, we issue a lot of POs under different funds, but yeah. it's still probably our responsibility in GSC to validate them. But on PD, we have so many uh, PDPOs for assets which are not visible in the mission. They are under procurement division purchasing groups. I'll confirm that and come back with the details from the presentations that we send out. Thank you. My last question is what happens with inbound deliveries under uh, the 22 PO which are going to be converted? Are they going to be created also under the 24 or we need to do manually for all the pending? They'll be uh, converted. You oh, won't need thanks. to manually it. Thank you. Sorry to the others. Uh, thanks, Sasha. From Minuska. Hi, Minuska. From Minuska. Minuska, sorry. First, uh, Minuska, 
First, I would like to ask you if you can send emails to chief procurement to include the GDP team because we are left outside, like email that sent to MINUSCA procurement and we were not involved as we are monitoring scorecards mm. ourselves. So please kindly involve GDP teams in the missions when you send emails to procurement chiefs. Yes, sorry. Didn't think of that. The second, the second, the second question, you said the services will not be involved. What about those services which they are reported as asset under construction, AUC, and basically they will be fixed asset before 30th of June and will be reported in the financial books as fixed asset, which are now reported as AUC? Yes. Um, thank you. That um, question came from Andoff as well, and I will come back with a, a written clarification as to how we're going to deal with them. Question from Mondov was when one PO has services and equipments in one side, but I'm talking about infrastructure and under construction assets, which are infrastructure and whatever fixed building that will be fixed asset upon completion reaching threshold, which are currently reported as AUC. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I took it as two points, so yes, I'll raise both of them. And the third one, it is. You said that they will be converted. What about kitchens that they are already purchased, for example, as a fixed asset, they have a lot of equipment inside. They will be split down because they reach the threshold of equipment and not only fixed asset, or it will be moved as a kitchen itself with all equipment inside. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? We are purchasing the kitchen, 100-man kitchen, and that 100-man kitchen, it is in the PO as a fixed asset, starting with 21. That kitchen of 100 men has a lot of equipment inside which reach the threshold to be serialized as equipment. But in PO, you have only one 100 man kitchen. Are they will be split down for the core stewardship purpose up to the level of equipments according to threshold or not? Emma, if, if, if you like, I will, uh, I will answer to Asim. Oh, thank you, Gianluca. Arsim, if you are purchasing the entire uh, 100 man kitchen, you will purchase with the proper product ID. Then, uh, once you receive uh, um, the, the product ID in, uh, in Umoja, automatically Umoja, after the good receipt, will create the equipment record for 100 man kitchen. You can then, under that equipment, uh, Create uh, how many sub equipment that you that you want in order to let's say track individually uh, every single piece of equipment. But these equipment will have zero cost, and they can be used let's say in the case you are going to uh, do maintenance or you are changing that particular sub equipment of, of the entire fixed asset. But uh, let's say that you are purchasing the, the complete 100-man kitchen and not only the a set of refrigerator, kitchen, uh, whatever else you have. So the purchase is done with one product ID like and then for inventory and uh, logistic purpose, if you want to track one by one, then you can create under the main equipment a lot of sub-equipment by yourself. Thank you. Just clarify that. Thank you so much, Gianluca. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Manuska. Um, Unmiss? <laughs> I think that we don't have any questions additional from Unmiss. Thank you, Anmis. Ansoa? Fabio? Hello, hi. Uh, I think Sorry, I'm fine. Sorry, I apologize. So, uh, yeah, I think we are okay from, from the moment. If we have any additional questions, I guess from Nairobi, the procurement office was supposed to attend, but I don't see them uh, there in the, in the screen. Okay. Rajo is supposed to be there, but I don't see yeah, him. Yeah, Rajo said he was coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're here. Ah, okay. Uh, no no, no questions at the moment. Thanks, guys. <coughs> I, I am. Uh...
Thanks, Pajal. I can see there, there as well. Um, Yunisfa. Around the table, any questions? Not yet. No. Not yet, Emma. No questions okay. from Yunisfa. Thank you. Uniopis. Uh, no questions from Uniopis. Thank you. Um, Anso. Anso, Anso, we are comfortable for now. We only received one PO with those issues in which um, the one of the the PO was uh, regarded as a fixed asset instead of uh, an item we should be uh, expended. We'll look into that and we'll get back to you. Okay, lovely, thank you. Anne McGip? No question, please. Thank you. Thank you. Unifil? Uh, no questions at the moment. Thank you. Minusma? Minusma, we want to emphasize the point that was raised by MINUSCA uh, concerning the um, involvement of the deployment uh, leads in the communication with uh, procurement. It's like here, yeah, procurement, nobody attended this DTC. I don't know if they were, were informed or not. So if you communicate with uh, the uh, procurement, you inform us so that we can follow up. That is it from Minister. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, is Manusta eighty? No questions at the moment. Thank you. Um, is he Syria? Oh, is he Syria? Uh, thank you. No questions at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Yunama. Um, sorry, we joined the VTC very late, and then uh, so no questions for the time being. If anything, uh, we will come back to you directly. Thank you. Uh, Yunami. Thanks. Thanks, Anzo. Okay. Thank you. No, no questions. Thanks, Yunami. Um, Antasip. On FISIP, Cyprus? Nobody? Okay. On uh, MEC? No specific question. I guess we are one of the missions who received uh, one of the POs that actually uh, we raised against the catalog of PD, but you just mentioned that that belongs to us, so we'll try to figure out how to fix that one as well. Thanks, Barim. <laughs> Uh, Unskull. Yes. Any questions? Unskull, yes. I have, uh, you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we have, on the preload files, uh, we have uh, got, uh, my colleague is in Brindisi doing a training, so I'm replacing him. But uh, I have a question. Uh, we have a generator at the mission which is in use. But on the preload pre files, you have put it as last. It's not, uh, it, it's a last uh, item, it's a last asset. But we have it and the status is in use. How do you correct this to confirm that we have the generator and it's in use? Gianluca. We did, we Can you please repeat? Sorry. Yeah. This is for. Um, it was from Unskull for a generator that in the. Um, file is um, marked as missing, but they have it in stock and they want to ensure that it's correct. Yeah. The map is missing and you have it in stock? We have it in use. It's working and it's uh, the barcode is in Galileo. Everything is in order. But you put it as last. What do you mean as last? Okay. Let's say that the, the map is not completely uh, is, is not completely uh, say finished for okay. 100 percent of the equipment of uh, non expendable in Galileo. So maybe wow. this generator is uh, is not been uh, yet mapped. 
So oh, okay. uh, these are this is the situation why you can, uh, we are fine not uh, uh, in the list but uh, apart from uh, oh. uh, in a okay. different okay. sheet. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, is that it on school? Any questions for Emma? No, yes. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank yes. you. Um, on Unsmill on? Oh, on smell. Okay, I think that's any... Okay, um, yeah. I mean, we don't see um, all on the screen, so maybe I will call out some of you. Um, I see RICE. No question from uh, RICE. Okay, thank you. Um, Monusco? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just joined in the question answer session just to share all the slides with us. Uh, we couldn't receive it. So that's there's no question. Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank just, you. Right. Just to reiterate that um, we're still waiting on approval of some information before we can share. Yeah, this. sorry. Um, I, I didn't get the presentation documents um, signed off, so I wanted to go through them with you. And as soon as they're signed off, the deployment team will send them out to you. Apologies. Thank you. Okay, um, Minusma, we already talked to them, right? Minusma, Minuska, yeah. uh, Minuso. Um, nothing special from our side. We just wanted to ask about the presentation. And okay. they, uh, you already answered that one. Thank already you. Already answered, okay. <laughs> so thank you. Um, Uniok, Uniok, you already asked, right? Yeah. Uh, Unowa. Uh, Joseph, are you around? I'm uh, Fatima from UNMIC. Hey, UNMIC. Uh, we have a short question. Uh, is there any way to obtain access to Cosmos for uh, our uh, data validators, like uh, yes. budget and uh, procurement? Sure. Yeah, we, we will make sure that everybody is included. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And I'm um, not sure if I missed anybody. Uh, Unisfa? I did that. You did, okay. Did you say you know us? I don't know if I got a chance to. Uno, uno was? Someone's leaving. Uh, uno, Unoka. Unoka? There's no question from Unoka. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, just una... to, so... Sorry, uh, GSC will probably do validation for UNOC and UNOVA as we are managing their procurement. So when it comes to PO, it will be GSC. UNOC and UNOVA. Okay, thank you. Um, UNAMID uh, DAFU. Probably not. Uh, we, we don't have questions, but we have. Uh, our, I don't think our procurement uh, personnel have been informed about this VTC. So this is the second time they're absent. So if you can send email to them as well to invite them. Okay. And the second thing, we have a couple of purchase orders with the wrong product ID. It has been sent to procurement to, to solve. If we will not solve it here, we'll come back to you. Thank you. Can I clarify one thing? Maybe um, so the invitation was sent to the validators as well as the data focal points, the deployment leads, and I think that was it. If, if you guys feel other people need to be included on these VTCs, feel free to have the deployment lead uh, invite them. I think that's where the disconnection was. You were sending emails to the... Yeah, sorry, yeah, and I, I apologize think there's a for that because I, I sent them to, directly to the CPOs and I shouldn't have done that. I should have sent them to you and then you could forward them. So in future, they'll come to you and then you can forward to the CPOs. Um, and just on that point before I forget, obviously we've had this one VTC... And then um, the week commencing the 10th of April, um, I would like to run two sessions, um, and I'll leave it for Joe and Amarin to confirm what days so you can work out which ones you want to come to. But I just want to be able to have the, all the documents signed off with you, and if I haven't got any answers out on other things, then I'll confirm things for assets under construction, etc. then. But just to give you a chance to have reviewed the documentation, It'll still be a few days before you start preload, so that we can just ensure that everybody is happy and ready to start. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Okay, I've just run through the quick, I mean, the last few missions, and then maybe we'll just recap. Um, UNOAU, uh, Brindisi is working mm. for them, right? Okay, yeah. that's fine. SABT, we have Burundi. Yeah. Okay, so um, I hope we don't miss anybody. Can you pull out those slides, please? Just click share. Okay, this one. Okay, so I mean, just want to uh, do the quick uh, recap. Um, you know, I mean, just to make sure that we are all on the same page of you know what activities are kind of coming. So I mean, thank you, Emma, because today uh, we kind of went you know the whole area of the PO conversion. But I just want to go back to these specific uh, activities, which is the preload and the postload validation for the mock two. Okay. We receive the nominations of your business data validator, okay, but I do believe that some of them are not uh, in this meeting today. So please make sure that you know your validators are aware of this exercise and the key dates are you know for the preload starting from 17 and the postload starting on 20th. So what will happen next is that uh, Emma is trying to uh, organize kind of another walkthrough, but that is specifically for the the, the preload and you know the postload file and kind of walk through of what exactly they need to look at and what is the process you know what is the sign off sheet where do you need to upload them so that is happening probably sometime week after the week after next week okay. So please, you know, make note of these activities, which is specifically for the mock two uh, data validation, and uh, for the ongoing uh, PO conversion, PO monitoring exercise. I mean, yes, we make note that we will try to kind of keep everybody in the loops, you know, so that we all know what is happening, what is you know going on from us, you know, to your CPOs as well as your core de the deployment team. Okay, so. So that's, yeah, I think we still have uh, some time from now right. till then. So please make sure that you keep your business validator for this specific data element, which is, you know, zero, zero, one, two, three for the purchase order. And then make them aware that they have to kind of commit to these uh, four dates. Okay. Um, anything else? Um, just to say thank you very much for listening, everybody. Um, for those of you that I know, nice to see you again. And obviously any questions reach out to the deployment team um, because I don't want to be contacting people directly and miss other things out. So I apologize for that. Okay, okay thank you. And uh, for next week on Tuesday, um, we will go over the last two data elements and I believe those are the big uh, area, you know, in terms of the equipment assignments and all those stuff. So please make sure that you have your business data validators who will be, who will be reviewing, you know, the data you know, coming into this VTC, okay? So apart from that, um, nothing else, then thank you so much, thank and then we'll much. see you next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, yes. and Thursday, yes. <laughs> okay, thank yes. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.